believe it's more so of a mindset that the people come into from being boxed into a community like that of a whole group of people that are just like you or in the same situation you're in but I believe when they mix the communities it helped I, I read about that the Atlanta Housing Authority offered like $100,000 to the people that were moving out of some of those neighborhoods into other neighborhoods that they had built houses in. They were tearing down the projects and building houses, but I really don't think that many people that live in the projects would have the type of credit that you would need to even get a house, period. After today, public housing may never be the same in Atlanta. A woman who started her career as a lawyer in corporate finance has directed a transformation affecting tens of thousands of Atlanta's poorest. Renee Glover is not a household name across Atlanta, but in 14 years as head of the Atlanta Housing Authority, she has directed vast changes. Atlanta is on schedule to become the first major city to tear down all of its project housing. The worst of those projects have been replaced by developments that were once unimaginable. Housing Authority contractors began the demolition on Carver Homes in late 2001. That cleared the way for private partners selected to invest in and manage the new developments at Carver and elsewhere across Atlanta. Centennial Place. It used to be Techwood, located near Georgia Tech. This is the country's first mix-income community built 13 years ago. Before the transformation, Techwood was once the country's deadliest private... Robbery prostitution killing. Poverty, the shooting, the drug abuse. Two guys got in a fight right across in front of my house. I saw one peep his head around the corner, pow, pow, pow. It was just like you was in a, a movie, western movie. Eva Davis moved into Atlanta's East Lake Meadows housing project in 1971. It wasn't long before murder and mayhem became a way of life. He ran right by my car and blood was just shooting out, out of his body. That guy shot him and he fell dead right before my face. The 650 unit housing project was never great, but when drugs took over and gangs claimed turf, it went from bad to horrible in a hurry. They would shoot and cut and stab and kill each other. That's what they did. By 1995, the crime rate was 18 times the national average. I would never go into East Lake Meadows alone. Shirley Franklin, now Atlanta's mayor, remembers the old East Lake well. How bad was it? Well, the statistics suggested it was just awful, um, that it was completely dysfunctional community. And then, in the early 90s, seemingly from out of nowhere, came an unlikely savior. Where do we stand on that? An Atlanta philanthropist named Tom Cousins, a developer from the other side of town worth more than three hundred million dollars. Do you have any idea how much money you have given away over your lifetime? Uh, no sir, I don't. I don't keep track of it. But I'll bet your company knows how many square feet you've built. Oh yeah, yeah we know that. Cousins is a soft-spoken, self-effacing Atlanta business legend whose skyscrapers dot the downtown skyline. He brought pro basketball and hockey to town and he built the tallest building in the U.S. outside New York and Chicago. But the broken down housing project in East Lake Meadows was like nothing he'd ever encountered. It's almost beyond description. Trash everywhere, windows broken out of the apartments. Crime was rampant. No attempt to hide the drug dealing and drug selling on the streets. Cousin's interest in East Lake began when he read a 1993 article that described how 70% of New York State prisoners came from just eight neighborhoods. Atlanta's police chief told him there were even fewer Georgia neighborhoods mass-producing criminals, the worst by far, East Lake Meadows. I drove out there, I could not believe it. Hundreds of kids out on the streets, they had nothing to say about where they were born. They were born there. And I thought myself, had I been born there, I'd probably be one of those people in jail if they could have caught me. The employment rate at the housing project, not the unemployment rate, was just 14 percent. Cousins and his wife Ann decided their family had to dive in. He created the East Lake Foundation and began to woo housing project residents like Eva Davis, the famously strong-willed head of the Residents Association. I was kind of nervous. Here this big rich man with all this money 
and and he willing to come over here messing with us, and ain't nobody else been wanting to be bothered with us. Well, I was like a lot of other people. I thought he was crazy. Shirley Franklin, long before she was mayor, was part of Tom Cousins' East Lake team. I thought he was overreaching, but he was taking on something that, frankly, the rest of us felt helpless to do. I honestly didn't know whether this would work or not. I honestly didn't, but I, I knew we were going to try. When a faltering golf club bordering the housing project came up for sale, Cousins and his family put up $25 million and used the club as the cornerstone of one of the most audacious redevelopment plans ever conceived. The urban nightmare that was the East Lake Meadows housing project was literally just a chip shot away from the fourth hole here at East Lake Golf Club. Founded in 1904, this historic, very private club had itself fallen into disrepair from neglect and was on the brink of bankruptcy. Incredibly then, when a plan was developed to transform the housing project, golf, traditionally exclusive, traditionally white, became the driving force to help turn around the neighborhood. It was golf, of all things, privileged, pristine, genteel golf that helped save Eastlake. It brought public attention, commerce, jobs. This was Eastlake 10 years ago, and this is Eastlake today. Torn down, rebuilt, utterly transformed. Clean, safe, family friendly. This was a pretty hellish place. Pretty. And now? It's heaven. <laughs>